все таки напружение перед ростером. Доброго дня! Слава Украине! Что вы все таки сумни? Еще несколько секунд и начинаем трансляцию. Good morning. I want to thank everybody who joins us in Ukraine Media Center, Ukraine Forum. I'm seeing we have a lot of guests in this studio today. My name is Golova Tamanova, and today we will be talking about the very important subject about the veterans. It's day 343 of the full-scale invasion, and it's year 9 of the war. So the subject we will be talking about that we will discuss is very important for our society. I see a lot of civil organizations, a lot of veterans here in the studio. So all these nine years our society was facing the fact that we have a lot of veterans, a lot of men and women went to the front lines to defend our homeland and we understand that after the war is over our task our duty both as a society and government with the support of international organizations to make their return home comfortable and convenient our speakers today will be Yulia Laputina the minister of for veteran affairs Vyacheslav Rayevsky serviceman and Konstantin Molava again the serviceman Miss Yulia may be first will be your word return of our servicemen after the war what's next well good morning everybody i want to thank our servicemen first of all those who are here and those who are in the front lines for their great jobs so we can have this press conference so we can have this discussion they give us hope for victory and really glory to ukraine glory to the heroes very important topic indeed but it would be way better if within these 30 years of independence we take care about this policy way before now we understand that the servicemen they they get back to the to their civil life after they re retire after the 30 years i have a 27 years of military service myself but people who are still capable of working they get back to the civil life and they're not being supported in their integration because military ser service is something absolutely different even during peace times it implies certain restrictions certain limitations they are the conditions of service where you don't belong to yourself you belong to the armed forces you belong to your unit which is regulated by the military regulations manuals you spend 24 7 on your service and when a person comes back to the family after 25 years and the family is like who is this? We haven't seen this person within 25 years. And that's some post-Soviet inertia. This is why the most important reform that we want to implement today is the reform of uh, implementation of mechanism of transition from military service to civil life. And it's not only after the victory but it's even for those servicemen and service women who are retiring after all those years of service and now that we're having this full-scale war and we expect expect the victory very soon guys we rely on you heavily we will have to cope with the systemic challenge the mass mobilization when people who got mobilized they received combat experience and the things that people see in the war well the war is not normal people get the reaction to the war as i mean psychological reactions moral physical and we have to understand that people return from war different and we have to create the conditions for their comfortable transition to peaceful life and the government should be taking care of it if we may proceed to the presentation 
I will show you our vision, our philosophy of veteran-related policy, the way it is and the way it's supposed to become. Within 30 years of existence of our state, no one was pondering over the fact where the people get after their military service as they retire. Even nine years ago, when there was no war, who are those people? What age are them? What's their specialty? What's their profession? And how do they continue their life? Because even if we take a person who enters a m military educational institution, they are graduate, they serve, and after 25 years they retire and no one knows where they go next. So the government policy for servicemen as the management of human resources in security area, we as a government, we should know after, even after the victory how many people will be there in each region, in each district that transition to peaceful life after military service, say within one year, and within that year we have to offer some instruments for them that would ensure the good transition, the comfortable transition to peaceful life, like medical ex examination, training for civil specialty, or maybe the opportunity to establish their private business. We analyzed our data in the Veteran Electronic Register and we've seen that many people want to do their own business. They want to they don't want to be hard employees. A lot of people go to agrarian business. Those are no big businesses. They are small farms that allow people to not only get their families involved in that business but also to rehabilitate psychologically by work on the land with animals with the cattle and uh, some people for example they go to IT area and we have to provide those instruments for development for them uh, well I I'm not going to go along the slides that there is a form for the defenders so we worked out the formula for defenders when the servicemen and service women are in the front lines they're the defenders as soon as we win we have to do everything we can so they become the warriors of renewal we have to rebuild the country and the defenders who had combat experience have to integrate into the society into their communities they have to raise the country in economic level they should be competitive in the labor market and the government should provide them with everything like free training for civil specialty the opportunity of mental and physical health screening and then private business hired employees or so they become anyone who pays taxes so that their families understand that we don't only pay some allowance which would not influence the economic condition of the family because in some way it's humiliating for a defender because they are the grown-ups who want to integrate in the society who want to develop their uh, country and on, other, on the other hand they would pay taxes which will support all the areas of our life further on but we understand that our enemy I mean before Russia splits apart until the very end well our enemy will be by our side and we understand that all those warriors all those fighters our defenders are a potential for national resilience so we have to to maintain them in the condition that would ensure that they can, in case of in escalation, go back to the front lines to defend their lands. And this is the government who should be 
taking effort for that. For example, you know that in Israel, uh, all, all the people, no matter the gender, either men or women, they undergo special military training, the refresher training, and we also have to implement, we have to take relevant steps to ensure the consistent military training for all the population. And those servicemen and service women who have combat experience, they should go to military educational institutions, they should train the other ones. So because we will end up at the point where we will all become defenders, because I mean, in those regions, even in those regions where there is no active warfare, but we have missile strikes all over Ukraine, so everybody has to have military training. So defender in the formation and warrior of renewal in the peaceful life and potential for national security in case of escalation, in case of threat to national security. So this is what happened in February last year because uh, when everybody who had combat experience in Kiev, Chernihiv, Cherkasy or Kharkiv region, even without any any notice from a military unit, they took up their arms, they took up their guns, everything they had at home. They didn't ask anybody whether it's necessary or not. They just took up their arms and they went ahead to defend their homeland. I'm proud of those people. I was talking to Mr. Valery Zaluzhny in the very beginning of the installation. He said, like, you understand? Like, he, there is no military theory that describes people with the hunter guns and with the Molotov cocktails dressed in uh, shell suits who go to the front lines to defend their lands with the grenades in their pockets. Well, we have a lot of theoretic things, but I will be practical. I will share just the most necessary information with you. Well, when I came to the ministry, I understood that they had no budget at all. There are papers, there is an institution, there are relevant programs which are not quite up to date and modern. So we started uh, trying to find ways for the ministry to make it able to raise more international aid and other resources to have the programs implemented. So first of all, we had this biggest problem, it was the dwelling, it was the bulletin for the people. We, we, we have an, uh, four, four categories of, of the people, those disabled as a result of war, the members of the families of those who perished in the front lines, and the sensitive category, the participants of ATOOS who are at the same time internally displaced persons. So the people who evacuated their families from temporarily occupied territories, occupied territories and who went to the front lines themselves, so people who basically lost everything. So if we don't solve this problem, we can send those people to say psychological rehabilitation or medical rehabilitation to a medical institution, but those people who have nowhere to come ba uh, back to. And with the support of the government, of the parliament and president, we were allocated 5 billion hryvnias to provide those people because the country accumulated three, uh, a queue of a more than 3,000 people and we were talking to the government of our country, we were saying that we have to provide a transparent mechanism for provision of a dwelling for the servicemen, but those uh, those uh, 3,000 which were accumulated before, years and years before, and thanks to our requirements, we were allocated those funds, but due to the sequestration of the budgets, those funds were channeled to defense because in February last year, country ended up in a very vulnerable situation 
and it, those funds were reallocated due to the sequestration of the budget but this year they were reallocated again and we will track that process so that the people who are in queue in the regional administration so that they receive that dwellings those their apartments their new homes we were trying to find ways to expand our opportunities and we created the all ukrainian veteran fund it started working this year i think it's visible on the social media now and as a budget government institution who takes care of the programs including grant support of the veterans we already raised international funds there is a hotline of psychological support under crisis conditions we can share the information about the phone number that was this hotline was established for those donor funds well this hotline is very respected it enjoys extensive respect in the veteran community all the psych psychologists are properly trained and certified and this program works people call with different questions they call well when they feel diff difficult they call well when they are concerned about the lives of their close ones which are in the front lines or the families of the veterans they call when they feel difficult during the missile strikes well they feel traumatized and we also work on the creation of both individual and group support for the people who lost their closed ones in the front lines we also understand that our veterans are very active people and many of them they have their own businesses so we uh, established two grant programs in support of a veteran community there were to bids already we would like to have them expedited but th there are regulations by resolution 190 when the treasury pays funds uh, gradually uh, according to priority like defense security and so on and so forth we had two bids we have a lot of winners with some we have many interesting projects including those which support our defense and security there are uh, veterans who manufacture the weapon cleaning agents uh, there are women's initiative who make uniforms there are winners in agrarian sector and a lot of other very interesting people obviously that pro program should be continued but the problem is that the veterans and i want to call everybody who gets involved in those programs please use carefully the information which is uh, available in the ukrainian veterans forum how to fill the forms properly because people fill them improperly we train the potential participants potential bidders and we will develop this area too another very important matter is the psychological rehabilitation because as i mentioned people come back home different from war and that's a normal reaction to abnormal conditions and they need support they need assistance and in the ministry for v veteran affairs we have five rehabilitation centers and we will reform them reform them <coughs> according to modern conditions in Kiev region in Borodavka <coughs> our psychological center was destroyed by a by a tank and now our flagman project is the reconstruction of that center and the establishment of a, of an up to date psychological support center for veterans and members of their families we have project paperwork developed already i our psychologists are, are quite heroic people because they continue to provide psychological assistance to the people even during those horrific events that were going on in uh, 
February, March last year in Borodyanka. So during that full-scale invasion, they acquired exclusive experience of psychological rehabilitation in conditions of warfare, in combat conditions. So we want to scale that experience. We want to build this up-to-date rehabilitation center under patronage of President Zelensky, who already transferred a couple of his international awards. He was awarded with the Medal of Freedom, the American award, <coughs> which amounted to $100,000. He, he received it in, he was awarded in United States, and he transfer, transferred those funds for reconstruction of the psychological support center. We are also being helped, helped a lot by Pol our Polish colleagues and a, a lot of other donors around the world. But one thing is psychological support and whole different thing is the study of facts and acts of genocide of the Ukrainian people by Russian troops. I want to include the scientific component to study how is it possible, how did it become possible that those people, or I would rather call them non-people, who could commit those horrific things against children, against women and civil population during the war. So this is one of our flagman projects. I can answer your questions, but in general, this is our vision of a veteran policy. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Yulia Vecheslav. The words adaptation, rehabilitation, starting from 2014, they entered our everyday life. So in your opinion, as a serviceman, what needs to be done? What are the main challenges that we have to cope with already now? Well, maybe in the beginning I will tell a couple of words about myself. I want to thank the Ministry for Veteran Affairs. I'm not some incredible veteran. I'm not a big serviceman, but I w was invited. I have some military, some combat experience and my short, short life. I spent about 30 years in the armed forces. I started my military service back in Soviet era. And then in Ukraine, I was serving as the platoon commander, as a company commander, officer of the staff brigade. Th th then uh, I, I became a philosophy doctor and uh, commander of a section of a uh, uh, section in the military institution. I met the war back in 2014. I was involved in some information warfare. I was training officers in Kiev for the teams of international of inter international cooperation. I was on rotation in the area of anti-terroristic operation, as it was called back then. Well, definitely, I, 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 we were talking to our brothers in arms. I will repeat it oneself that war is something that you can, uh, like you can come back from, but you never return from war. So war is something that changes you forever. And from the very first years of war, uh, it made me crazy when you come back from Avdiivka and then you come back to, the, then you go back to Konstaka and you go back to, to Kiev, it, it's only s s seven, seven or eight years you come back to Kiev and uh, the life is vibrant here, nightclubs and everything. I was going crazy about that. It was back in 2015, 2016, and there was a, an opinion in the front lines when you were asking the you were asking the servicemen in the front lines, what do you guys need? Do you need any food? Do you need any uniforms? 
and many people started pondering over this matter. They said we need no material things. We have to have realization that something we do that people back there in big Ukraine, they need it. But when you get back to big Ukraine, it the feeling was very weak that someone else need, needed it and it resulted in psychological troubles well even regardless the fact that i'm not a big combatant you you like you sit on a bus and and you hear somebody some ape hearing some russian music well it was driving us crazy so uh, all the veterans everybody we need psychological support and when there are some resonant political events in in the country and the veterans back in 2019 ended up in psychiatric hospitals and they they were asked like what happened to you they said i'm just sitting in this special section i'm not being let home you see there are different resolutions being taken i was in the front lines for five or six years before and now there are resolutions taken which show you that it was all in vain so when you come for your land when you come to apply f for your land plot plot you're being responded that there is nothing and there will be nothing so go away and there is it's there is no allocation in the budget like there is no land plot for veteran but for the, they fill the budget f at cost of selling the land so it's incoherent and we need this psychological support again because even fighting with bureaucracy sometimes it's like hitting the wall and the, the ministry for veteran affairs that was created a couple of years ago their projects they helped me personally i had psychological troubles after i retired back in 2018 i was physically i was physically feeling when my roof was getting on fire i was visiting psychologists uh, um, but it didn't help me uh, unfortunately some psychologist services are not of real high quality sometimes i was feeling that i was about to explode i found an ex a psychologist who very very beautiful girl well I, i'm not trying to be sexist here and she and she was like well what troubles you is this some impressive episode of your life and i was like oh my god child what should i tell you oh that the, there was a case in avdivka and from the budivka mine the, the there is the there there is a small forest and there was a fine skirmish and we wounded one of those apes in his stomach and he stumbled uh, and he stumbled uh, across that bush in the forest and then he got all his intestines hanging on that bush and she was like oh my god how can you tell us this uh, well it's it's a negative experience obviously well you cannot uh, get supported by psychologists like this because i had to support her well uh, i'm talk, to, to, talking about your miss is it the structural unit of the minister for veteran affairs well it's a civil it's a civil organization but they're being supported by the ministry so i went there there was a good psychologist and she uh, asked me what troubles you and uh, i told her one two three like a couple of things well she uh, i would go in the mountains uh, i like to hike so she asked me if you have any dream and she, i said I, I want to i want to write a book uh, so she said yeah exactly this is something that you should do write a book write a book about your memoirs 
so I made it uh, I don't try to show off here but when I had the first specimen in my hands printed out in Vivat editorial in Kharkiv it was not the direct influence directly influenced by that that I I got rid of my nightmares but there there is the trend that I can track so I appreciate the job done by that psychologist from your miss I don't remember her name but after I issued the book I wanted to do the presentations to spread the book because it costed me something I wanted to so it's a creative self-expression yes so really when you come to a center and you when you say I want to make a presentation there is some stupid bureaucracy like write write us a letter you understand this veteran literature it's very specific but for the book to be sold well it, it, it should cover it should be interesting for all the all the population of Ukraine like it should be economically feasible but in Yermiz we had the first presentation for my book and for me it was psychological support for the veteran they were supporting me they were telling me yeah go ahead write that book so this is something to make the people adapt to the civil society because all, uh, the, the, there is also legal support necessary it's all very integrated because when you go to a government agency and they uh, I'm I'm sorry for my French but they shit in your head but when you you just turn away and you walk away but when you're being uh, psychologically and legally supported you understand that you in your turn can support your family both psychologically and materially so support with employment support with establishing uh, private business by a veteran you don't you don't want to submit to anybody like you want to be your own commander so I cannot say that I had a lot of positive things from Ministry of Veteran Affairs but a couple of times when I cooperated with them it was good it was pleasant and I was regarded as a human the report is over well thank you for sharing your case when uh, you talk about cooperation between our veterans and civil organizations who really understand who really understand the topic of veterans who understand what is the support needed for them and when that help is not professional it will be a good message for the civil organizations who work with veterans please remember that professional help is necessary Constantin I'm happy you have something to share from your experience good morning everybody I agree with my colleague <laughs> I personally did not go for uh, psychological support even after my first wound I met a couple of times with such in incompetent psychologists for me it was again Avdiivka industrial area there was a woman there was a woman coming to us who were asking us about our problems and I said like I think our guys won't tell you anything right in the positions what 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 kind of psychological support can be right in the battle position I uh, was retired when I was wounded I was uh, I had trouble moving and uh, the psychological support was established uh, based on the American experience when the guys they sit in a circle and they start asking each other how did you cope with that you you because you see understanding in the eyes of those those very same people 
those like you that they understand what you went through because when you talk to civil specialists you, you don't see understanding in their eyes but when you gather when you sit together even for a cup of coffee with your brothers and arms you converse half an hour so there is understanding and this was my re rehabilitation and about the support as you retire really you face indifference in for for example in this so so social support agencies like I, i'm wounded i i had trouble w walking even but uh, they were sending me from one office to another what what else can I add? I think that yeah, it's necessary. It's necessary to establish such initiatives to do such things. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you for sharing your experience, dear friends. I think that there are questions on the floor. I'm happy you have a lot of them, and maybe we will proce proceed to some off records format further on. So, if anybody has any questions, please introduce yourself. Good morning, Miss Yulia. I have a couple of questions. First of all, what are the countries that the Ministry of Veteran Affairs cooperates with in terms of rehabilitation of the military, both psychological and physical? And are there already programs in place for training uh, of the form for retired military for their comfortable transition for civil life? Uh, we established the initiative for psychological rehabilitation this year when we are being directly contracted by rehabilitation uh, medical institutions who comply with a number of criteria. For example, if a medical institution uh, which submits either to Ministry of Health or the communal communal medical in institution if they have psychologists and psychiatrists they got contracted by us directly and the veterans who un undergo psychological support their rehabilitation there they go to those centers and there were already 7000 cases of psychological support of psychological rehab and physical rehabilitation in such centers so people don't have to go to psychologists when they go back to civil life. They have been worked with by psychologists right there on spot in those institutions. We work with different countries. Recently, our delegation, my deputy got back from the United States where they studied the experience of psychological and uh, physical rehabilitation in which are in place in the United States and we will see what can be implemented on our end but our vision by the first reactions after the visit to the United States is that we are we go hand in hand so to say with the veteran policy in the United States their rehabilitation is based on the main f five in the key five rehabilitation centers in five states where there is not only rehabilitation but there are only training hubs retraining hubs we go along the way of reformation of our five centers we submit to the Ministry for Veteran Affairs and we also create, we sign the memorandum with International Migration Organi International Organization for Migration we, who will assist us in creation of 25 centers for veteran development and in cooperation with the Ministry of Education we will have a veterans referent in the best educational institutions of Ukraine uh, for bo both te technical education and higher education the, uh, all those institutions they have a potential uh, in cooperation with us uh, to cover the needs for a training for civil specialty 
for developing economy in all the regions in Ukraine. We, last year we were working with Ukraine Norway Fund within a scientific project. Our veterans are undergo rehabilitation under that project too, but we want to get on a new track for understanding of veteran policy as the policy f of management of human resources in security and defense area. So we take some random region and we know that thousands of veterans will be going back there. For example, what's the economic component? What's the economic fundamental of that region? Is it construction or is it agriculture? So we see the military specialties of those people who they were before the military service and we will pick the programs for their retraining but the end point should be employment not only the study and retraining because previously we had problem programs that w w where people were getting some say driver's license after retraining it it did not really influence their further integration into civil life we cooperate actively with the polish government in reconstruction of a rehabilitation center we have a project joint projects with usaid undp and thanks to the help of an uh, american organization called irex we created we created The initiative which corresponds with different Ukrainian agencies is the re electronic register of Ukrainian veterans. It's not yet launched due to the security uh, reasons. We can continue digitalization and we will implement digital instruments in DIA to, to be client oriented for our veterans to create the veterans electronic cabinet uh, and provide them with, with different services it's almost ready but we don't want somebody on in occupied territories so to, to show up in their we don't want it to show up in their smartphones so that they can be identified as uh, veterans but after the victory those services will, will be available to everybody as soon as they launched uh, more questions Vitaly Zalewski channel 5 Yulia can you please tell us when did you start working on that reform and when uh, it will be started because we understand that veterans are already coming back home and this support is needed already now we understand all everything after the victory but what about now? Uh, all the necessary regulations, all the necessary acts are already adopted, but to launch this reform, to start it, we need the coordination with Ministry of Defense, with the Ministry of Internal Affairs, with Ministry of Social Policy, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Education. We already commence it now R more more legislative acts will be adopted soon, but we will have it approved by NSDC. Now this strategy is being coordinated and approved by all the, by all the ministry. There will be a roadmap and this reform should take effect before our victory. But we also have to understand certain, certain uh, challenges because let's take a very simple experience the system of provision of a servicemen with dwellings 30 years of independence well everybody who served knows it that there is a huge corruption component and the main challenge is coping with it we want to make sure that this system when a veteran retires to make sure that they already have their apartments they have their homes so the, how it happens in the army for example there are units the construction department with the 
with the budgets way more expensive than it is in the market they they build something and those servicemen who receive homes from the government they know what's their quality people people get their homes of a very low quality uh, that should not really exist uh, so there's a lot of challenges to overcome we work with the ministry of defense very actively but the institutional resistance of the system who were feeling quite well all those 30 years we want to overcome their experience we want the system to work normally after our victory and the the servicemen they have normal